Good morning. Good morning. Um, I want to thank you all for taking some time out of today's schedule to come to this session. How many of you are long-standing certified businesses with the council? Somewhat long. All right. More than a year. Okay. More than five years. See? Okay. So we're good. We're in that one to five range. Good. 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 My name is Valerie Cofield, and I'm president and CEO of the EMSPC. Today, we're going to talk about making your MPE certification work for you, the powers of connection. For many of us, um, we get certified because we expect that it's going to open doors of opportunity, but we don't really know how to leverage that certification to uh, create those opportunities or how to position ourselves with the certification. I always tell people, people get certified and then they start rubbing it, like it's a, it's a magic <laughs> genie and the genie's going to come out of the bottle and suddenly this contract is just going to appear at the end of the certification rainbow. It doesn't work like that. Um, we wish it worked like that, but it's really not the way that it's, it's set up. It's set up to be a tool. And at the end of the day, the most important tool you have is the product, service, or solution you have to offer your customer. Certification is the cherry on top of that Sunday, Because if you come into a room and you don't have anything to offer, then being certified really has zero value. And so for us, what we help you do is figure out, not only we go through the certification process, and, and um, I have Jan Fleischner and Brittany Rivera here who are our certification uh, leads for the council. Um, they will be, the, they're probably the, your frontline connections to certification. So once you go through the certification process, you're going to either, uh, or when you go through the certification process, you've either had contact with Jan and or Brittany. Um, they're typically your first introduction to the council. We are fortunate to have the chair of our certification committee here with us, Troy Matthews. Um, the way that certification works is staff does the review and makes a recommendation to a committee who then reviews and makes the recommendation that you are approved. And so it's taken out of our hands. And one of the things I want to tell you is I'm completely absent from the process. So calling me and saying, Valerie, can you help me with certification? I can. I immediately hand it over to my team. And that's the creative partiality in the process and to make sure that it's fair um, and also to make sure that it's efficient. Nothing worse than getting, you all know, anybody who has a boss, you know, it's nothing worse than getting your boss involved in something. Now, if you are the boss, then you know this is what your staff says about you. <laughs> it's nothing worse than getting your, your boss involved in the process. So my role is really to create an environment where the team has autonomy in the certification process, but then also has the resources to help you leverage that certification. And so certification, again, as I said, is, is the is the is the added benefit is that value add when you uh, meet with your potential customers the role of certification is to help your customers see that in addition to being a great source of a service supplier solution you also can help them advance some of their corporate initiatives around supplier diversity um, it allows them to recognize that they are in fact engaging with diverse businesses which is typically a part of their corporate culture um, and their enterprise goals. What we have done with the council is we've structured it in such a way that not only do you have a certification team, but um, each member of the council can support you in identifying and connecting with those customers that you're targeting for uh, future business opportunities. And what we say is, you know, when we say, well, what do you want to do with your certification? The expectation is not that you will say, I want, to, I want to do business with everyone. We help you hone in on what industries and what customers you want to target. And we have an initiative, which I'm going to actually let this team talk about, and I'm going to get out of the way because these are the people you need to know, and these are the people that you need to talk to. But we have an initiative that, that works with you as business owners to identify a small group of customers you're interested in, an industry you're interested in, and then help you through that process with regular check-ins to see how those connections are moving. And so that you then also begin to understand the business cycle of those 
uh, enterprises or industries that you're interested in working with. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Brian. Brian Oglesby is our Vice President of Strategic Partnerships. And Brian's going to talk in deep, or I guess in depth, but is supported by Brittany and uh, Jan about what that looks like, what that strategic alliance looks like, what that mentorship program looks like. I was your welcoming. <laughs> I want to thank you. Please ask a lot of questions because these are the experts. And if you have a specific question, like this is where you want to kind of get into the specifics of some of your questions and concerns about your certification and how you can use it or where the advantages are, and then also how you um, leverage the council itself to help you uh, drive your business objectives. So Brian, with that, I'll turn it over to you. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good um, As Val said, I'm Brian Oglesby. I'm the Vice President of Strategic Relationships and Business Development um, for the council. Um, my role is to come up with very specific ways to connect our MBEs to our corporate base in terms of our corporate buyers. Um, there are a lot of ways it gets handled, and I'll circle back to some of the um, advice giving that um, Val was alluding to. But initially, I want to talk about the, our industry sector groups. Uh, what we try to do in developing industry sector groups is try to create groups of, um, group out our, our buying and supplier opportunities based on emerging and growing industries that, that are growing in our sector. We're doing economic research, we're understanding the marketplace, and we're knowing where the opportunities are growing. Currently, we're operating three sector groups in pharmaceutical, um, Troy is a, a wonderful member of that, um, energy and construction. And then as the marketplace dictates, we'll develop um, additional industry groups. So what this, what this does, it allows for MBEs to be in the same room as, in the same, or the same space as supplier, as buyers in those particular industry sectors. So if you have a lot of activity in the pharmaceutical sector and you've decided as a business decision and a strategy to primarily focus your supplier efforts in the pharmaceutical space, it behooves you to be a part of the MBE, um, be an MBE member of our, um, our pharmaceutical industry group, affectionately known as FING. What that does is, one, we get to evaluate data in terms of what the opportunities are. Um, informed by what the corporate side is saying in terms of where the opportunities are and emerging, primarily in spaces where they're not, they don't have a lot of um, diversity spend, and then try to match those MBEs to those spaces. We also try to utilize the sector groups to develop mentorship relationships with specific corporate members, whether it be as a collective group or a, a, an individual uh, corporate member, an individual pharmaceutical firm. And create a space where the MBEs can walk in the room and have um, commonly identified commodities and services that don't necessarily provide a strategic advantage within the sector, like everyone needs staples and paper clips, and it doesn't provide J&J &J for competitive advantage if they share that information amongst the group. But if you're a supplier of staples and paper clips and you're in that room, instead of dealing with one company, you may be dealing with seven or eight companies that have the same need. So building out these sector groups creates an ecosystem where, one, we identify opportunities both current and emerging. Um, having more direct relationships between the MBEs and our um, corporate base uh, and also make and create activities and um, activities and services and data and reports that will out, outline and articulate what our services are, what, what's available in the marketplace and how you should be calibrating your business to get to those spaces. Um, it's really intensive on the amount of information that we receive from both the MBEs and the corporate side so I'll often send out emails saying uh, what's happening in your industry, what's happening, what's emerging in your company, what type of innovative services that you're offering, um, and how can we inject that into this industry sector space. Um, one of the things we try to emphasize within the industry groups is innovation because oftentimes you'll provide a product or service that is not in high demand. So when we have those, those instances where we have services that are not in high demand or things that just haven't been identified as a need, we try to introduce that as a, um, in the sense of what, how can you do this work in an innovative way or a different way than someone else is doing? Or do you have a service that um, hasn't been in the marketplace yet? Our previous meeting, we had a presentation on blockchain technology. And it was a little bit eye-opening because a lot of the companies in the room didn't realize that there was a space where blockchain could work for them. You know, you think in the pharmaceutical space, and I'm using them as an example, 
because that's the industry group that's furthest along. But it's an example of how we can build out these um, services and commodities based on what's needed in the marketplace and how you can utilize that MBE to um, become deeper, more deeply engaged with our corporate base because it's really about creating co the connections. And I, all, I make this offer to everyone in the room in terms of MBEs and corporate members. Um, if there are other spaces where you feel like we need to build out these sector-based partnerships specific to the type of goods and products and services that you're putting in the marketplace, come to me and I can build it out. It's um, not meeting intensive and we've kind of recalibrated how we execute. It's not very meeting intensive, it's more native intensive and built on creating situations where you are engaging directly with corporate members in the space where you are providing services, that you are an expert in providing services. And also gives you an opportunity to, to discuss the innovative approach that you do your work. So that encapsulates what we try to do with the sector group and it's a good way of getting on trade into the MBE corporate relationship space. I mean, what we try to do is um, create vehicles for our MBEs to have direct conversations, direct interactions, direct connections with our corporate base, ROAR being one of the, one of the, one of the signature events, and then as an offshoot of that, our sector groups are events that are dovetail from those sector groups, and then the one-on-one -on -one interaction that you naturally get from being in the same room with people that you're trying to do business with. So, if there's any engagement that you want to you want to have in terms of um, directly within the sector, please reach out to me. Um, in terms of other things, we want you to, um, and anytime you have a question about anything that I'm discussing, feel free to break in. And I want to make sure I, I pass the ball over to our certification folks so they can uh, give you some additional insights. The other piece that we try to encourage our MBEs to do is become adept at B2B, business to business activity with other MBEs. In this space, one of the great issues that we um, encounter in terms of uh, connecting our um, suppliers with um, corporate buyers is capacity. And oftentimes, the MBE doesn't, re doesn't have the minimal capacity necessary to do business with a large buyer. And what we try to do with our em environment, one of the pieces of advice that we impart upon you, is get to know who your other MBEs are in the network. Connect with them. Engage with them. Find ways that you can do business with one another. Joint ventures, partnerships, taking on larger um, contractual opportunities collectively as opposed to individually. Because oftentimes, and I'll, you know, um, Val uses the notion of the genie rubbing the lamp. I use Willy Wonka's golden <laughs> ticket. And oftentimes our MBEs get Willy Wonka, if you've seen the chocolate factory, they got, everyone was trying to get the golden ticket to get into Willy Wonka's factory. And oftentimes MBEs get the certification and feel like they've just gotten Willy Wonka's golden ticket and into the wonderful world of contracts. And my role in the EMSDC, I go to the corporate member and I ask them what they want specifically. If it's not there, if it's not present, I try to find it within our network. And then I try to find it within our extended network of regional councils. And if, if it's still not there, I try to cultivate it and create it from within our council. And part of that is knowing what you guys do and knowing how you guys can interact with, with one another. And also dealing with companies who are willing to interact with one another. One of the things we find, there's a lot of, um, I would say, internecine competition. You're, you're more focused on competing with your peers rather than partnering with them. And you'll find, if you read the history of these large corporations that are our corporate members, they started off as several companies that decided we need to work together on a particular project. You know, for a Johnson, there was a Johnson. Um, and that's not, that may not be a factual story. It just, it, it, it just came to me. You know, Steve Johnson and Mary Johnson decided, you know, we both have a last name named Johnson, we'll start a company together. But the point is, that some of the larger companies that you're trying to do business with today are the result of smaller companies joint venturing and partnering and deciding, hey, let's stay together and do business together as this new entity. Um, one of our major pharmaceutical companies are going, is going through a major acquisition of another large company and becoming um, dealing in um, agribusiness and as a part of their portfolio of services. So look, companies grow through collaboration, through partnership through developing business with one another through peers, and even through companies that may not have the same line of business, but relate. I'll give you an example of a conversation I had today. A uh, company that does engineering and another, another company that operates drones. Um, there's an opportunity to inspect a fleet of 
of wind turbines. You use the drones to fly up there and see what the damage is. The engineering company comes and does the fixing. Totally, two totally unrelated companies can partner together to um, build a, a, a better opportunity. So the B2B portion is very important. Seek out your peers. Utilize these, these industry groups to identify peers and potential business partners. Utilize these particular types of situations and meetings and, <coughs> and matchups to identify who your peers are. Not just chasing the contract from the corporate side, but chasing the opportunities that your peers present for you. Be creative in your business development. Um, be strategic. The second piece would be understanding what the buyer marketplace is. One of the things that MBEs don't do very well is business intelligence. Um, we, we can serve a particular role because we engage our corporate members, we're, kind of, we're informed on what they're, what they're looking for, but at the same time it's incumbent upon you as an MBE to understand your marketplace in terms of what the stressors are on those corporations, what the regulatory environment is, what they're really looking for what their philosophical orientation is on engaging MBEs. Some of them are doing it because it's, it's part of their culture. Some of them are doing it because there's a regulatory environment to a lot of their work that requires them to do it. And some of them do it just to put a picture in the brochure. And you have to understand where, where that company lies and how to, how to approach them in order to get those contracts and those opportunities. Because instead of worrying about the uh, motivation, be agnostic to it, just understand what the motivation is and pitch yourself in that direction. Understand what's happening in the marketplace, understand what the business environment is for that particular company. If you're researching a company that you're targeting, you, shouldn't, you should read the newswire about what, what their stock <coughs> shares are doing, what type of products they're introducing to the marketplace, what their aspirations are, who they're trying to acquire. And that's going to steer you in the right direction in terms of what type of service you can provide to them. So understanding what the marketplace looks like and what it looks like now, a year from now, five years from now, is a very good business move. Um, I know Val did a show of hands and most of the MBEs in here are relatively new. And this is a good time to understand that concept. To look into the face of who you're trying to do business with and understand who they are as organizations. Understand the people in those organizations and what their orientation is in terms of how they do business and why they do business. And understand their products and where they're trying to extend their markets and where their markets are and how you can get to those marketplaces. Um, third point would be to use the council. And we have great people here, um, Leah, Jan, we have Brittany. And um, every one of you as an MBE will have a liaison to, to the council. It doesn't matter who it is. I know everybody wants Val, she's a rock star. <laughs> Um, but we're going to be disguised at Val as, as Val as often as possible. And everyone at this table is capable of pointing you in the right direction. And we would like for you to utilize a liaison as your direct point of contact every time you reach out to the council. Now, if there comes a question uh, that, about certification, which I'm not the expert on, the experts are in the purple shorts over here, <laughs> I will probably refer you to them unless it's a question that I can ask with my minimal knowledge. Um, and we will work together that way, but you will have a liaison within the council that you can talk to directly about anything that you need as an MBE. And we want to make sure that you have that point of contact on a regular basis. Um, have we come up with a formal way of doing that yet? Not officially. Not officially. Not officially. We're working on it. <laughs> so um, in, in order of popularity, it's probably one, two, three, four. So, or one, two, three, four. I always wanted this four. <laughs> so they will be able to point us in the direction of prospective buyers? Yes. So if I go and ask them, they'll be able to help Yes, them. and we all, we'll all work together as a team. Now, there are certain areas of access that we all have different relationships within the council just on our experience and direct engagement with companies. Okay. So sometimes it may be you're going after a company that I, I know of very well, but Aliyah's on the phone with every day. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, in my business development hat and whatnot, I'm smart enough to say, Aaliyah has a better relationship with them and they can, she can probably point you in the right direction. Okay. So everyone in the council is going to be able to reach, um, that you reach out to is going to be able to point you in the right direction in terms of who you need to talk to and want information. Now it may turn out that you talk to Brittany more than anyone else because of the nature of your question and it may bounce to me a few times, but you'll always have one person that you can talk to that will launch you in the right direction if they can't give you the guidance. And I'll be able to get the contact information? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So absolutely. moving forward, what we really want to do is there's eight of us within the council um, and that's not very large, um, but what we want to do is be able to 
vouch for you on a personal um, level. So again, there's about 480 certified businesses um, within the council. So there's really two of us that really go through that process. Um, and what we want to do is spread that out a little bit better so that there is one person that you can constantly contact um, if you have any questions, um, if there's somebody you would like to be introduced to. Um, but our overall focus is to get to know our MBEs on a more personal, ba personal basis to be able to vouch for you. Um, and we're going to be focusing on business development as well. So moving forward, we will be having a second questionnaire for our site visits. Um, that way we can get to ask more personal questions. Who's your um, target corporations that you want to focus on? How do we get to the process of achieving that? Um, what are opportunities that you could attend events to possibly meet these buyers or even if it's I don't know, quarterly meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we have quarterly meetings that are held. We have uh, some networking opportunities that are outside of the office hours. We understand that there is some difficulties with running either small businesses because it's usually a one-man show. Um, but it's very, very important to us to get to know you guys on a personal level. So yes, we do have um, after this, in our resource tables after uh, lunch, there will be business cards available for anybody within the EMSDC team. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I add on to that? Um, when she keeps saying knowing us on a personal level, so what we used to do was like the corporate connection, where we used to used to have like three people, like corporations that you wanted to reach out to, where you kind of send your capability statement to our contact. We're trying to move away from that because we don't want you to just get sent to the spam or all right who's this person so that's where the personal relationship and interaction comes in if i know this young man and i know he's a printing company he's looking for this type of business when i'm talking to a corporation <laughs> there i'm sorry i just didn't even read it <laughs> but i'm i'd be talking to a corporation in a few seconds after i meet you like oh i just met this man um he's doing this so it's, it helps us connect when you build your relationship with not only the staff um we can kind of um we could kind of talk, you know, talk for you and on your behalf when you're even if you're not around and we know your needs better. If that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Coming from personal experience, so we do receive um, MBE searches from our corporations that either get sent to myself, Brian, anybody within the staff. Anybody feel like the um, <laughs> And we do these searches, but I will tell you those who we know are the ones that first come into mind um, that we know personally. So again, just engage with us. I know it's a little difficult, um, but hey, how you doing? Happy birthday, Merry Christmas. You know, just something just to keep us remembered. You guys are here, you guys are present, you guys are active. Um, I cannot vouch for someone that I know personally nothing about. Yeah, cause they um, do ask, they say, can this person handle, like Brian said, the capacity, can they handle this? When was their, where was their last job? Like, a lot of people that I meet, I work a lot with uh, class ones or people that just came on. Um, if it's someone that's more corporate plus or that's, um, I guess a little bit like class three or four, I kind of send them to Brian. But when it comes to business development, we definitely, it's easier for us to sell your services when we know exactly what they are. Um, but Brittany was just speaking about the MBE, to, and, well, I didn't get to that, that. <laughs> the searches, like I said, they do send it out and that is the first thing they ask. What was their last job? Are they capable of handling a, a opportunity of this size? And everything like that. So we can help with those type of business development needs as long as we know what they are. And uh, you know, if you're not opening up to all of our services and utilizing them to the best of your ability, then we're not gonna know that you're ready for these opportunities, so. In addition, I'm sorry, one more time. Um, so I'm, I'm very much in charge of recertification applications. Um, so a lot of recertification applications that come through I see are just upload your documentation and you don't ever go back to your portal. You don't ever go back to your company profile. Moving forward, please, please, please update your information because you start your application, I'm not saying everybody, but typically what happens is you start your application, you fill in all your documentation, you get your certificate, and you just go back for recertification application and upload your documents and think you're done. 
it's not, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. And I only say that because you may be moving in a direction where your NAX codes may be not up to date. You may be. Or you're missing some or you're opportunities. Missing sometimes we search by next to Sometimes we search by keywords. So like sometimes people call me like, oh, I see, you know, I know how to do this. They know you know how to do it. You know what I'm saying? So and just keep that updated. So when we're searching for these corporate members, sometimes we only have time to just read your whole bio. But if you have your next codes and you have the keywords, everything in here, like I do this, this, ex yes. you know, everything specifically, we can find you easier out of the 500 um, members that we have. Yes. Yeah. So products, services, and descriptions, just please don't keep that a general. Yeah, right here. I don't want to yeah. lose it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Phil Harigi, uh, CEO of Saber Systems. Uh, yeah, we're relatively new to, I'll say, like this ME certification, but we've been a uh, federal contractor for almost 30 years. But for the last, I'll say, 20 of it, almost 20, it, we've been in the full and open. So you know, the opportunity for us to to, to still like so work and you know, be able to you know, leverage an MBE is you know, of great interest to us. But a question I have is is that. Uh, you know, at least I know with the federal government, and I don't know about you know, some of the other buyers that you work with, is that you know th there are some sometimes, in, especially in technology, predefined notions of what an MBE's limits are in terms of size and scope. You know, and we're a larger you know uh, company, and so you know, I think I was in a Comcast session before, and they look at things like hey, they want to make sure that they can make payroll next week and things like that. Well, like we're way beyond that, so. Right. The question I have is, do you work with companies to maybe inform buyers that, hey, there are companies out here that you may have never considered to to farm out, mm -hmm. to, or to, say, to outsource to an MBE, but please take a look at these companies that are on the size of the scope? Well, that speaks to what they're uh, talking about in terms of know, us knowing who you are. Um, part of our job is to match appropriately. And I always use the analogy, if someone asks me for a cheeseburger, I'm going to give them a cheeseburger. I'm not going to give them seven salads and say, this is good for you. So if a company specifically says, we want an IT outfit that has this much capacity, this much revenue, this much size and scope, that's what we're going to try to match them with. Um, I, think, I think overall in the MBE space, um, larger, uh, more, some of the more uninformed corporate um, entities perceive all MBEs in the same way they perceive small businesses, and that's not the case. But for us to know who you are is more important in that regard because we can communicate specifically, this is what you're looking for, this is a company that can fit your, fit your needs. They don't, they don't deny us because they think all of our companies are small. We're in a space where we get a specific idea of what they're looking for and try to fill that well, spot. It, it's like the commodity versus it, it's like sometimes like there's a sense that with some buyers that I'm not going to outsource to small business or an MBE for that matter to something that's mission critical. Mm -hmm. You can well, I mean, the landscaping I and you know. Well, well, <laughs> here's know, here's poetry, a, but, you know, we're here's the thing that we're trying to do. <laughs> and, the, yeah. and here's the thing we're trying to do. Part of my role is this. Um, to demonstrate the value proposition of our MBEs. Um, there are saturated markets, and I always ask the question, what do, you, what, do you, what do you want that you don't have? And oftentimes, your type of business comes up. We get things like staffing services, landscaping, and some of the ancillary types of um, MBE services. But when you start asking the right questions in terms of what are you looking for, that you, what, do you what don't you have that you would like to have? And they're often surprised when we say, oh, we have a company that can do that. Um, I think we just have to kind of change the approach and the mindset when we engage the corporate side and also demonstrate the value proposition of help, letting us help them source people. Because Google's still the best way of sourcing for most corporate entities, unfortunately. And if we can mitigate that by creating a space where you come in as an MBE and we give you access and opportunity to a, a corporation that's looking for your specific service and you deliver on the contract, and it makes it a lot easier for the next person in line. And it also gives you opportunities to do B2B with other MBEs that maybe those small entities they don't want to deal with, that you can subcontract with them as a prime. So we can create that space, and we've done it in a few spaces um, already. And if we can continue to do that, it changes the perception of what MBEs are. Because um, you're discussing a perception issue. And 
sometimes a, a path of least resistance. So, you know, when you're talking about companies that use Google for sourcing primarily still, um, they're certainly not going to be sophisticated enough to understand that, that there's variety in MBE. We have to give them that information. I just wanted to add something in it because I do I do hear that a lot, so I'm just going to be real with you. Um, this is exactly why we our business development is so important because we want to get all of our MBEs up to that level where we could say we can um, speak for them and know for sure they can handle this job. If you get people that come in and just like you've seen with the golden ticket theory, and then they just say. Oh, I'm an MBE and um, I deserve to have this opportunity. And then they just reach out to the person. They're not aware of their needs. They haven't done any research. They're kind of unprepared. Um, their 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 back of the house is not all together. It kind of makes us all as a group look bad. So that's why this important of making your certification work. This workshop is important to let everyone know that not only are we here to match your opportunities, but we want to make sure that when you get to those opportunities, you're able to successfully you know, get them and keep them. Because once you get a contract, it's not just about getting it, it's about keeping it. Keeping it for that next go around when they're looking for someone. So um, we do have a few um, very strong corporation, I mean, uh, MBEs in our, in our portal. So this is why I, well, I was gonna, we was gonna kind of take turns, but now that we're passing it around the torch, um, just to let you know a little bit about the MBE services. Uh, after you get certified with Brittany and Jen, I'm a Leah, I kind of help with the MBE services, business development part. And um, I work closely with Miss Christine. I'm not sure if any of you heard of Christine Robertson. She um, does the programming. So I'm kind of like her assistant, Valerie's assistant, you might as well say, so I get a little bit all of the fire. Um, but we have to kind of make sure that once you certify, you know how to utilize these services through our MBE to MBE portal, which a lot of people do not know about or use. Um, I even had an MBE call me the other day and ask for a search for MBEs. If we get onto the portal, if I could get more people to go in and opt in, so you have to opt in to be a part of it, and you only see MBEs that's opt in. So you'll be able to see like other MBEs in um, our portal, other MBEs in your, in your industry, see what they're doing and kind of see whatever it is for a partnership or a competition, whatever you want to use it for, um, you can utilize that. I also, we also have the opportunity portal um, some of our MBEs, I mean, some of our corporate members send information in for RSPs, bids, and I'm able to put them on our portal. Um, you could go in there anytime, check it out, and see what's going on. If it's nothing, I get people like, oh, yeah, that's nothing for me there. You could call me and I say, okay, well, uh, we get a lot of opportunities that's sent and we send them right out. So um, I had a security guy the other day. He said, it's no opportunities coming from me. I just sit like five or six out this week. So sometimes if you want to bring it to my attention, like this is not for my industry, what's going on? I can make sure when they're going out, because they might go to your assistant or your alternate email. That's what the updating is very important because we send out opportunities and people say they weren't there and they missed them. Um, so just make sure that you're keeping in contact um, for anything like that. We also have the link. I'm not sure, I know y'all get a lot of emails from us, but <laughs> some of them come from me and their real opportunities. Um, the link comes out. We have our newsletter from our PR people too, but the link comes out. Um, we actually just try to put all the bids and events in one place on the link. So I send that out every two weeks. Um, all of the upcoming events, any um, grant opportunities, anything like that, I try to put on there. So if you, um, the bids that's on the opportunity portal are also sent to you on the link. So if you don't feel like logging in, I'm sending them to you every two weeks. Um, just like they said, the searches, we have RFPs that come through all the time. You may get them from me or Meg. Um, you send them out. If they send out something, may, sometimes they're not always as timely. So you may get something that's due in a week or two, just to be real with you. But we are always sent stuff from the city. So we send it right on out to all of our MBEs in their alternate content. So if you're not receiving those blasts, please let me know because I want to make sure that you're not missing any opportunity that they may fit you. So um, there are opportunities, there is anything that you miss. I always try to keep it, keep you on our radar. If somebody that's definitely like Aaliyah looking for something, I keep you on our radar. I tell Valerie, I tell Brian, they're my main point of contacts because they co they're connected with the corporate members more. Have you spoken to any corporate members that are looking for um, someone that does this? And then that's how we are usually able to connect for you. So, you know, just just use us because you're, <laughs> you're paying us. Um, <laughs> use all the services. I hate when people come and say, I didn't know you guys did that. 
Um, the welcome packet, Jan, she knows everything, so I'm like, I'm almost sure Jan might have told you. Probably left over. It's fine, but I'm here to tell you again, it's no problem at all. So just utilize all the services that we have is the best thing I can say. All your emails or car will be at the resource table. Yes, yes, we have business cards up there. We'll definitely make sure I have your updated contact. Sabri Systems, I saw you guys just don't know who's our updated contact that I sent to. And I just want to, um, before I forget to say it, because Aaliyah um, reminded me to say something. Um, as MBEs, uh, one of the things that we try, we count on you guys to do is to let us know who you're targeting. Because not every corporation is a corporate member, but every corporation could be a corporate member if we know they're on the radar. So if you're targeting a specific company, let us know. So we can engage them because sometimes we can bring a certain level of cred credibility to the, to the conversation where they're more likely to engage you as a result. So if there, there are corporate member, corporations that you're targeting, uh, check with us and see, are they a corporate member? Because we have a pretty extensive list of corporate members, both regionally and nationally. Um, and if they're not on that list, we're going to try our best to put them on. And specifically, I'm going to try my best to put them on the list. Uh, we have several companies here that are scouting us as corporate members participating in the matchmakers today. We like to demonstrate the efficacy of our work. And a lot of those companies were identified by other MBEs who are targeting. So please let us know who you're, tar who you're targeting um, as a means of getting them more into the fold and getting them more involved and creating more opportunities. Yes? Yeah, Greg Pure, U.S. Trade Compliance Alliance. We do import export services mm -hmm. for our customers, uh, pretty much making sure they don't get in trouble mm -hmm. with U.S. government regulations and so forth. Mm -hmm. Your communication between MBEs. How robust is that? Because I think that my service is maybe more attractive to your membership mm -hmm. audience than your corporate sponsors, because usually your corporate sponsors are larger companies, mm -hmm. and they have robust import-export compliance programs mm -hmm. already in place. Mm -hmm. Well, we're all, uh, uh, I'm VP of strategic relationship. Let's make a strategic relationship. <laughs> and, um, I mean, do you, do you have any level of internal advertising? Well, yeah. Well, um, Aaliyah, the stuff that Leah Leah just talked about the link in our MBE to MBE so, program, that's what, that um, newsletters. Link. So yeah, it's yeah so yeah, so we we do it, and the tool is only as good as the people how well the people utilize right. it. Right. So any additional tool that we can throw into the mix, and any other additional resource and um, external partner we can engage to broaden our reach, we're going to take. Um, okay. We're agnostic to who who gets the connection made. We just want to make sure our MBEs are thriving. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if we can utilize your tool to make it happen faster or better, then and we'll certainly we'll certainly talk to you and partner with you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone in here that's not certified? Oh, nice. Oh well, Jan. <laughs> What's holding you back? Jan, <laughs> this is the guy actually introducing you to. So he's here. He I heard you wanted to get started. I'm sorry, Greg. I didn't call you the guy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, this, this, this is basically my final research mm -hmm. uh -huh. organization in China. Well, we, we highly endorse CMSDC as a wonderful source of certification. And Jan will guide you on your initial steps in the journey. Uh, she knows, she's probably forgotten more than I know, and um, can give you every piece of insight and remember everything about it, so. Have you been to our website? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Have you registered? No, I have not. Have you looked at the application? Uh, I don't think I did. You're going to do that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma she's from my ah, ah, so we put that in the Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. No, something scary, something scary. Wow. Congratulations to the yeah. two of you for coming out. Um, there, there was a third person who wasn't certain. Oh, oh here. Oh, yeah. 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 Just, and he's um, hiding in the back. You, we're we're going to get you, too. Um, um, I'll, do, I'll do from a procedural um, aspect. The application itself is filled out on our website. So um, there are links under the What We Do tab. You follow MBE certification. You'll know you're at our portal when there's a green highlighted bar up along the top, and you have to register for a login. It'll be emailed to you like immediately. But you need to complete the application. The application that we use is the same application that's used nationally. You're not being per certified per se by the EMSDC, you are being certified by the National <coughs> Minority Supplier Development Council. How the network works is you get certified by the council that's closest to where you're headquartered. 
do if you are in the state of Pennsylvania, the state of Delaware, and anywhere south of Trenton. Yeah. Well, we'll, um, you we'll fight. We'll say, we'll say Princeton. Princeton. There, we well, sort of <laughs> fight over the border. This is no line. We're at war with our New York, yeah. New Jersey council, so we'll, we'll try to steal people. Get certified through our organization. The exact same application is used across the network. The same process, the same documentation that needs to be submitted. So it's not, it's not we we don't pick and choose. I just want a couple of things from you. You don't even have to fill the application <laughs> out. I want everything from you. Everybody goes through the same process. Um, there is documentation that needs to be uploaded, proof of ethnicity, proof of citizenship. We're looking at resumes. No, we're, we're certifying we're not qualified. We're certifying that you are minority owned, minority managed, minority controlled, and you must be considered an independent business. That's what we're certifying. We're not certifying anybody that you're good at what yeah, you say you do. That's up to you. <laughs> um, as part of that, um, we have to take, we have, uh, we have a certification committee. The folks that sit on the certification committee, they're supplier diversity professionals from our corporate membership base. These are the folks that at the end of the day will make that decision based off of how you've completed the application, the documentation that you've submitted. Um, if you, um, there's a site visit involved. We, do, we no longer do if we're home base, we no longer do home base. We do those over the telephone, but there will be an interview. So we have to take all of that and look at it as a collective package. Um, and again, the requirements are minority owned, minority managed, minority controlled, and must be considered in any kind of process. I actually have a question where you describe everything. Um, this black firm, we have offices in well, actually two districts. Mm -hmm. okay. Would, it be required that we apply to both or no whatever wherever your your legal headquarters are that okay. would be the council okay. that you would get certified and again then the cert the certificate itself is issued by the national minority supply mm -hmm. it's portable so, so you can so use it, it okay, gets that, that was my yeah, question it I used, to New York too and, yeah. Yeah. yeah it used to be um, you had to reciprocate with other councils which never made sense to me because it's if, if if you can, if you got a driver's license in the state of Pennsylvania, you could drive to Ohio. You're allowed to drive. There. So I never really, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it is a national network. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, our certification chairs. Um, I've been on the board of directors for four or five years. Um, I've been the certification chair for last two or co-chair. Um, and I got to tell you, the reason why I got involved in the certification committee was I wanted to, this is really the life of this organization. This, this is the heart of, of the council. And I really wanted to understand what drives it. And the fact is, this is a quality organization. These guys are amazing at what they do. And they make my job easy, number one. Um, but allows us to uphold the standards of the NMSDC on a national level. Uh, we come at this without bias. Uh, we are procurement professionals. Uh, we're representatives of our, of our organization. And from our perspective, we want to have good corporate, or, or I should say good membership, because that's going to allow us to make sure that there is no impropriety, that we have people that are actually certifiable. And so this way, you know, we all meet our regulations and, and, and that we don't have any anybody that could, could be considered as not really a minority of business. So, um, you know, I wanted to also say that, you know, some of the things that you guys have done really is great. Uh, collecting more information in that questionnaire is really going to be helpful to us as procurement professionals because I'm Johnson & Johnson. I buy, we buy a lot of stuff, right? It, maybe it's not under my remit, but there are others that I would connect, be able to connect you to. Uh, and that's really the way that it works. It's about the relationships and the networks that are in place uh, within our own organizations. Um, I would say make sure your information is up to date um, and, and what you do and don't over embellish what you can do. Be honest because the worst thing it can do is ruin a relationship because of a failure. So be successful but don't take on too much. Um, and make sure that you understand who it is that you may be working with. Uh, 
Um, you may not want to work with a Johnson & Johnson. We're going to ask for 90-day payment terms. We're going to ask for a lot of other things. You know, just be real about that because that's, that's kind of the environment that we're in. Uh, and we buy lots of stuff in bulk. It's big. Um, so just understand who you may be connecting to, how you're moving forward, because this way you're not looking for that golden ticket. Yes, we spend 30-some billion dollars a year, but that might be you know, one billion with one supplier or something like that because they can handle a billion dollars worth of work. All right? So just keep that in mind as you proceed. Um, but I just wanted to say, you know, I'm glad you're here because the, I, I came here to support these guys because they do an amazing job for us. And uh, really looking forward to, to having the additional information um, so that we can connect. We really do look, J&J &J is looking to expand uh, the amount of spend that we have with diverse suppliers. And so having this additional information is going to make my job easier. I don't deal in NAICS codes, NAICS codes very well. We use procurement taxonomy. We, you know, what are we buying? So, you know, helping us have better information allows us to make those connections faster. Okay, but we do use it. Thanks. Because it's very important what he was saying about taking on what you can handle. I was just at a meeting yesterday with the Congressman um, Dwight Evans um, and Ken Lawrence, the Commissioner of Montgomery County. It was just, um, it touched me a lot because as I'm doing the portals and I do the link, like I said, I always um, try to tell people to go back to the not the basics, but like the city of Philadelphia, PGW, PICO, everyone like that has vendor portals. I always try to bring this up. I'm not sure if you guys are aware about them. Uh, they're open, they're on their websites. And I have a ton of opportunities that um, come through there. They may be smaller than you want. Like you might want a big Johnson & Johnson, but like he said, build yourself, build your resume and up to that point in, um, by taking on some of those small opportunities. Like they have tons of opportunities and their complaint to me is, uh, we don't get enough people bidding on it. We have the same suppliers that we just keep selling to. Selling, selling, selling to them. They're comfortable with them, they love them suppliers, they keep selling to them, but you're here to mix it up and shake those suppliers up and give them competition. So just if it's a small opportunity, it might be $25,000, $50,000, something, whatever that you may not feel like is big enough. I'm hoping that some of our MBEs are taking on more of those opportunities. Um, it's um, about, I forgot how many counties they said it was, but Montgomery County along with Allegheny County is a lot of counties in Pennsylvania that have these opportunities and we just would love for some guys to just jump on and start bidding on some of these smaller jobs so we can build, <laughs> build all of us up. <laughs> Last word about it, Com uh, compete on the small level, collaborate on the large. Nice. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.